I'm currently developing a yet to be named cozy creature collecting and management game. And this is Devlog 4, Character Design. It is my understanding that template images are paramount when modeling a character. And so that is what I began with. Influenced by animations and cartoons I used to watch as a kid, as well as those I watch today, two rough character template images emerged. One from the front and the other from the side. Instead of showing a time lapse of the slow and frankly quite painful modeling that followed, the following animation will work as a prettier visualization of said process. After some research and an iterative approach, I was able to model, not sculpt, a character that was both visually appealing and hopefully correctly topologized. The latter was done with three aspects in mind, deformation, silhouette and details, all while trying to keep the polygon count in a reasonable range. Of the three, the details were the least important, since I knew the cell shading would obsolete a lot of fine detailing. Hence, most of the focus was on the other two, and they were achieved in line with my current knowledge by exclusively building the model with quads i.e. polygons with four sides. And make the edges evenly spaced. With a higher density in areas with much deformation as well as minimizing the use of end poles, which are vertices where five edges are intersecting. In the cases where I used them, I tried to place them in minimal deformation areas. Lastly, I tried to design around good loops, like the face loop, eye, an eye mask loop, lower face loop, mouth and nose loop, and a few others. With all this in place, I could also apply a subdivision modifier for an even better result. For a long time, I debated internally if my character designs for this game should feature texture-based mouth and eyes, but I eventually decided against it, because I think the alternative of modeling them results in an overall better visual experience. Next, I gave the character some personality by adding eyebrows and hair sketched out in the reference images and then modeled. Since I don't plan on featuring naked characters in my game, a shirt pants and some adorable sneakers were created. Exporting the models to Unity and applying the default cell shading material as well as outlines made it painfully obvious, as anticipated, that generating outlines by doing edge detection solely on the scene normals and depth values was insufficient. The most straightforward extension would be to apply edge detection on scene color in addition to normals and depth. I eventually decided against this for a lot of reasons, the two main ones being that this would add four additional texture reads from a new texture and it would lead to unwanted outlines in future designs. For instance, on a shirt like this, where there are distinct color differences in adjacent pixels on the print. Instead, I opted to use the already established normal texture, or more specifically, the alpha channel. This channel, as per previous implementation, was functioning as a mask where pixels of objects that should have outlines had an alpha value of 1, and everything else had a value of 0. 
manually setting vertex colors in Blender and altering the normal texture generation shader. By rendering the vertex colors to the alpha channel, this texture would not only hold normal and mask data, but also segment data. With this data now available in the normal texture, I could extend the outline shader to run the Robert's Cross Edge Detection on the alpha channel as well and incorporate the result in the final output. Although the cell shading was visually appealing without further changes, the current implementation was limited since it did not support textures. However, it was implemented in such a way that it was easily extendable and so I could simply extend the float and color properties with texture properties and corresponding texture reads. Then, it was just a matter of UV unwrapping the meshes, creating each separate material and applying them. To summarize, I've learned a lot, both practical modeling as well as topology theory all while creating a character model that is at least subjectively beautiful. As my knowledge of topology, sculpting and modeling improves, the possibilities to improve and create new, even better models approaches endlessness. Thanks for watching. Bye.